Welcome viewers. So few days back, we had made a video on how to read annual reports and we got a very positive response. And I hope you liked that video. In case you have not liked, I suggest you to watch. The link is provided below in the description because today's video is uh, next level to that. So if you watch that video, come here and see, this will be more fruitful. So then uh, we had said that uh, we will create uh, videos on how to read few animal reports, taking certain examples from 2022. And that is what we are going to do in this video. So I'll pick one company, which is very famous. It's a very well-known platform company. Actually, it did really well, created a lot of wealth and then has it has undergone correction. So I felt this is the right time to cover this company. And uh, I really liked the annual report. So this uh, annual report is on a theme where, you know, I kind of like the annual report. Uh, also, I have read the annual reports this year where, you know, there were a lot of excitement around some theme which will play out. And then I liked, uh, I, I mean, I got interested in the companies playing that theme. But when I went and I read that annual report, I didn't like it. So let me know if you want me to cover one such annual report what you know after reading how to how to read about animal reports which are which doesn't look so good and which raises lots of doubt on investing i will cover that also so type in the comment box in case you want me to cover that but for the timing let's go ahead with this annual report which is none other than this company called cams which is present in the asset management industry now if you remember from our last video of how to read annual reports we had highlighted that uh, we should break annual reports and the key sections which we should read is uh, the letter communication from the management, the management discussion and analysis section, the business snapshot section, uh, you know, the financial statements, the auditor reports, notes and schedule, forms, disclosure. So we will go through each of them for camps and we will try to first understand the business. Uh, second, uh, we will try to understand are there open areas where, you know, there are still there are uncertain things. Third, we will try to identify what are the key questions where we need to further seek the answer, maybe through phone calls, which will help us to build a better understanding of the business. So I would suggest, uh, why don't you download the CAMS annual report for uh, 2022 and you can go to CAMS website, download it. You can go to screener.in, look for CAMS, download the annual report and then open the pages, which I am telling so that, you know, you, uh, you go through it live. So if we look at uh, page number two uh, on the annual report, which if you open the PDF, you will see as page number five, uh, FY22, a year of transformation. So this is an important page because it highlights certain things which the company has done in 2022, which gives idea that, you know, there are new things which are happening, like they are launching a account aggregator platform, or there's a migration which has been done from Fra for Franklin Templeton Mutual Fund. Uh, so, and they are also opened a, you know, record keeping agency platform. And then there are certain digital transaction informations given. So it gives idea that some activity has happened in FY22. In case if you read further, you'll realize, uh, you know, Franklin has been also, you know, one of the players and looks like, you know, Franklin has winded up that business and the mutual fund business now that has come to, uh, you know, camps. Further, if you go to the next page, you will realize that, you know, gift city is becoming popular and everybody is trying to, you know, though the, uh, these are initial days, everybody is trying to set up a business model around it. And camps has also, you know, opened the first AIF service provider in the gift city. Uh, also in terms of yearly performance, you get some solid data in terms of uh, the transactions they have processed or, you know, delivery volumes, you know, they have developed. So you're getting some idea that, okay, it looks like this company is the mutual fund industry. This company is some kind of backend data processing or document processing company. So you start getting some idea about the business, what the company does, what the industry is doing, what they're doing in 2022. Then they have given a key highlights month by month, what the company has done. So it gives fair idea of in terms of business, what business they are in, which sector they are in, what kind of profit they have made, uh, you know, uh, what are the activities the company has done in this particular year. So it's not a stagnant year. They have done certain important things which they feel worth highlighting. So if you go to the next sheet, uh, annual report page number four, it says it's India's largest technology company for mutual funds. So there are two words which are very important. The customers are mutual funds because it's for mutual funds. And we know the whole concept of financialization of saving and how mutual funds are growing. So you get a fair idea of where the company is playing. And then they call themselves technology firm. And we know the future of technology looks bright. 
So it's serving an industry which is growing at higher rate in the technology industry, which is something good. And then uh, you understand it's the largest registrar and transfer agent for the mutual funds. So you get a fair idea of what kind of business the company is in. And then if you look at this data, when they say India's largest, they have almost 69% market share. So it's almost a monopoly business in this particular industry. And mostly we know usually the services, uh, technology businesses, they are asset light businesses. So high growing, you might get a fair sense. And when you, the idea is to read through the annual report, compare with the financials, the kind of, you know, mental image you're having about the company you're getting or not. So uh, how the company is growing, is it asset light business because mutual fund is growing industry, technology businesses are usually asset light businesses until they have developed a product and a lot of money has gone in building the product. Then on page number five, you get a lot of transactional information, how many transactions they have gone, how many SIP books they have served, how many, you know, unique investors they have served. What is important is these are aggregated numbers. So our effort should be, what is the unit economics? How much they make money when they serve one customer or when they serve one transaction or when they serve 100 crore of average EM? Because we don't know what is their revenue model. Is the revenue model dependent on transaction count? Is the revenue model dependent on investor count? Is the revenue model dependent on assets served? It's very, very important to understand. And the revenue model in the unit economics, that is the crux of any company analysis. Because when the company goes in downturn, you will know whether it is going to be impacted by lesser number of transaction or lesser number of investors or lesser num count or lesser amount of AUM. It's very, very important to understand. So Mark, Mark this as a question if you don't know what is the unit economics. I think that is what we should derive from the annual report. Not only the right answers, but the right questions also. Then coming to sheet seven, uh, where we have the corporate structure or structure, you see the company has five subsidiaries and 100% subsidiaries. So it looks like there is a standalone company and there are a lot of subsidiaries which have been created for specific purposes. Like there is a subsidiary created for insurance repository services. One is for uh, the main uh, payment services. Then one is for investor services. Uh, so there are, and then there is a sterling software private limited. So there are different kinds of subsidiaries. We must understand are these subsidiaries uh, value contributing? Are they generating profit? How much of money has gone into these subsidiaries? What is the purpose of these subsidiaries? And then you have a shareholding breakup and you can see promoter shareholding is not high. So we should understand why it has gone down, why promoter offloaded their shareholding. But the good thing is if we see there are a lot of FIIs, a lot of mutual funds, AIF, and 19% is the individual shareholding, which is quite. Good. So page number eight provides more information and some of the subsidiaries, which we saw, it provides more information around what is the subsidiaries, how many transactions they're doing. Uh, there are certain new businesses, like it's not only working on the mutual fund industry, the company is also working in the AIF. It's also working on the insurance side and they are growing well. Uh, now, what is imp what is missing here is we still don't know exactly how much of you know revenue is being generated from each of these businesses, but it looks like they're providing certain information, but we should dig deeper into uh, you know how much revenue, what is the growth. And uh, one good thing is if we see, they have mentioned that they have signed uh, you know almost 30 plus funds for the AIF PMS, which is a good amount. So we should look at the AIF uh, industry and then we should look at the what is the kind of market share they have captured or trying to capture and all of that. So decent information, but few open areas and a lot of questions which we need to seek answer from, you know, the non-core or the new businesses perspective. So on 7th of August, we are having a webinar on auto and uh, electric vehicle sector. And we plan to cover the overall history to cyclicity, the future, the breakup of the businesses, the EV scenario, how disruption will happen, who will get disrupted, who will get benefited. Uh, you will get access to the video, access to the PPT. Uh, you will get few very interesting Excel access, which are dashboards built around the auto sector. So uh, do register if you are interested and look. I look forward to host you. So now let us look at the management communication to shareholders through the shareholding letter. And it's important to understand the tone, uh, you know, whether they are talking about the business, they are talking about the activities or they're just using jargons, whether they're trying to highlight the performance in terms of numbers or, you know, they're just daily dialing. So it's very important to understand all of this and let's look through the shareholding letters. So there are three, four things <clears throat> which are very important. Uh, one is uh, some of the new app launches, uh, then uh, 
the new launch of some of the new business, I mean, the updates on some of the new business segment, like they mentioned AIF, PMS segment, and some new business lines that is their focus to drive, drive growth. And, uh, you know, getting uh, Zeroda onboarded because Zeroda has also applied for AMC license and we know how disruptive Zeroda can be. So that's a good sign that, you know, the, the most disruptive and the number one company uh, in its respective industry when it's coming to AMC, they have chosen CAMS and already CAMS has a 69% market share. And the same continues with MD later where he is also emphasizing on, you know, AIF industry, uh, what they're doing as a payment aggregator for the NBFCs, for the insurers. So a lot of focus on these new businesses highlighted in these letters. So if you read these letters, you get a sense that they are focusing a lot of new apps and all. We should ask if these apps are money, revenue contributing, profit contributing. If not, what is the purpose of these apps? Are these apps to support the ecosystem and hence they get benefited? Also, they talk a lot about a lot of new businesses they're going in, they're investing. So question is, are they investing in these new businesses? Are these new businesses generating profit? What is the growth rate? What is the kind of return on capital expected? What will be the size of these businesses after five years and how much money, you know, camps can make out of these new businesses? So when we are doing a business analysis or a valuation analysis, I think camps is not only about mutual funds, but it's about mutual funds and AIF, NBFC, insurance, uh, national pension scheme. And we should see uh, what is the scope of growth and revenue five years down the line, how each of the five businesses will look at, and then what is the you know total valuation we can tag to this company. While browsing through the annual report, we come to page number 70, where we have the salary details of the employees and the management and what kind of salary hike was given. And uh, you can see the uh, overall, uh, you know, the management was paid around 10% hike. The employees were paid around, you know, 9% hike, which looks quite okay given the kind of performance company has done. Also, we need to look through if what percentage of profit the management is charging a salary that is not given here, but that should be available somewhere. Page 72 is very, very important because we saw in the business summary, we saw in the management letter, they talk a lot about new businesses and the business structure had a lot of five subsidiaries. And in page number 72, you have a form AOC1, which provides financial information about these subsidiaries. And it tells uh, what is the share capital, what is the asset, what is the profit. And you will see that bulk of the profit or bulk of the turnover right now is being generated by the parent company, Computer Parent Management System, uh, which generates, you know, almost, uh, you know, uh, 289 crores of profit. And uh, CAMS investor subsidiary also generates bit of profit, but there are companies which are in loss, like CAMS financial subsidiary is in loss. CAMS insurance is generating just 4 crore of profit. And if you look at their asset, it's not like no money has been spent. Almost 6 crore has been spent in financial, but almost 53 crore has been spent on the insurance business. So the question is when so much of asset has been built, that money would have been funded in some way. So is this the max profit limit or, you know, is there more to it? And, you know, what is the future profit 5 years, 10 years down the line? So we must understand, and there are certain companies which are loss making, if those subsidiaries turn profitable, can CAMP see a better, uh, you know, realization in profit margins because the stable business is there. But what about these four or five businesses? Is there a scope of margin improvement and hence in future, will it lead to overall profit margin improvement in CAMPs? So many times, you know, we just look at the summary data as a screener and we feel this is it. But only when we'll get into the details of business, you know, these subsidiaries wise, understand these businesses, understand their potential, we'll come to know what kind of future holds for uh, investors. Now coming to page number 101, where they provide more information about segment wise performance. This is, I think, common thing which I am seeing is they're giving uh, info on the mutual fund business, but the other business, they're not talking a lot in terms of numbers. They're talking a lot uh, in terms of activity. The question is still, are these businesses less significant? And of course they are, because when you see, so many times you will have to connect the dots. So you had the form AOC where you had this subsidiary information, financial information. These are the sections where they're providing business information. And now by this time, you should have idea that when they're talking about uh, insurance business, in which of those subsidiaries insurance business falls, when they're talking about NBFC business, where it falls, when they talk about AIF, where it falls. 
so that you can connect the business activity information and ultimately what kind of financials and revenue and profit is generating and what kind of asset base. So this is where we need to connect the dots and then we need to see if there is a more potential to you know each of those businesses. The next important section is financials uh, because the crux of the performance lies there. And it's not only important to understand the PNL balance sheet and cash flow statement, but also to go at schedule level and notes level and try to understand the detailings. And here in camps also, there are certain things where we need to get into detailing. So let's go through the financial section. Important to understand how the company has done over last, you know, five, six years. And especially we should focus on years where the company didn't do really well. So if we look at this particular data, we can see in FY 2019, uh, the company's EBITDA dropped, the company's profit dropped. So if it is such a secular business, why did the drop happen? This will help us to understand what are the years or what are the business scenarios when the company doesn't do well and when does it play out so that in future we are more cautious about you know not overpaying because of the risk and we should be aware that when to make exit uh, because such scenarios can again play out so in the balance sheet side uh, one way to understand the company is by the nature of asset what kind of assets a company hold some companies will have more land some companies will have more plants some companies will have more softwares so uh, let's make a note of it, what kind of property, plant and equipment CAMS has. The other thing, if we see there are a lot of investments which the company has done. And if you look at the balance sheet size on a 900 crore balance sheet, they have almost 229 crore of investment. So uh, we must look at, uh, you know, non-current investments. So what are these non-current investments? Also, there are a lot of current investments of 226 crore and there is a major jump from 135 crore. So two things, one, why this jump has happened and second, what are these 550 crore of investments on company books, which is almost 50%. And also the company has a lot of bank balance and cash, almost 110 crore. So it's important to know where they are investing this money. And if you look, it looks like a quite asset light balance sheet, uh, you know, with a lot of investments. So the crux is here. What are these investments where the cash is deployed and why there is jump in investments? These are the three questions I'm taking from the standalone balance sheet. If we look at the PNL statement, uh, so we can see there has been a very good growth from 732 crore to, you know, 903 crore. The profit growth has been good from 219 crore to 290 crore. Uh, but uh, a few things which are noteworthy is uh, there is a jump in employee benefit expenses from 217 to 270 crore, which is almost a, you know, 53 crore jump on 217, which is almost, a, you know, 20, 20. 3% kind of growth. But remember, we saw in the employee salary section, the employee salary has been increased only by 9 to 10%, whereas the employee benefit expenses up by 22%. So why it has happened? Gut feel says they have added new employees. So question is why they have added a lot of new employees. Is it like they're expanding the businesses for the new businesses? What I want to highlight is this is how you have to take information available in different points of uh, annual report and then you have to connect that information and then derive additional insights so this tells it's not it's just not about the normal employee salary growth there could be some different reason and we need to find out how that is going to impact the company in coming years also we must understand what are the various operating expenses what are the other expenses so regarding investment when you go to page number 162 you get the answers so they have almost you know uh, 226 crore in the mutual funds uh, they have 229 crore invested in the subsidiaries. So see what is important is they have invested uh, 229 crores in the subsidiaries and the profit of those subsidiaries are uh, hardly 10% of the business. So that, you know, which means the core business return on capital is much higher and these investments may not have generated that kind of return on capital. Question is, will they, when they, how much, all of that. And that is where we should focus. Even if we are asking questions to the management, we should have fair sense of what is management's vision with this kind of investment and what they want to achieve out of it. Also, we can see other than subsidiaries, all the investments, most of the investments are there in the liquid fund. So uh, no hanky-panky management is not trying to do any kind of aggressive equity investments. These look more like safe investments provided they have purchased the right kind of debt instrument. Also, while analyzing the other expenses, which is there in note 24, you will see there is a 50% jump in legal and professional expenses. Though it's a very small amount, 13 crore, uh, the jump looks a little bit higher. So why it has happened, we need to understand. Also, we get a breakup uh, like repair and maintenance, your communication expense, your uh, legal expenses. These are some of the key expense items, which gives you a fair idea of what this other uh, expense comprises of.
Another interesting thing is when you go to page number 169, you get a breakup of revenue from operations. So out of that, uh, all the revenues, core revenue of 863 crore, bulk of the revenue comes from data processing and it's an RTA company. But there are revenues coming from customer care services, which is 62 crore, uh, which is, uh, you know, almost uh, 7 to 8%. Then there are revenues coming from recoverables and some miscellaneous services. So it would be good to understand, uh, you know, what kind of customer care services, what is recover recoverables, what are these miscellaneous services that will help us to, you know, understand the company revenue streams better. Also, if you look at the page number 170, uh, you look at other income sources and actually the dividend, there is dividend coming from subsidiaries and this dividend has come down from almost 38.5 crore to 27 crore, which is a significant fall. So the question is why the dividend has reduced from subsidiaries and what is the future outlook? Are the subsidiaries not performing well? And what is the future outlook? Because, uh, you know, uh, this is a big fall. And ideally, if this increases from 38 to 48, there will be a 20 crore difference on profit, which is a significant jump. So it's very important to understand. Uh, the other is if you look at the employee benefit expenses, because we are talking about when the salary has grown only 10%, why the employee benefit expenses have grown more than 20%. And we can see there is a share-based payment transactions uh, expense. And this has jumped from 7 crore to 23 crore. So we must uh, try to find from the management what is this? Is it some kind of ESOP given or, you know, uh, why this has happened this has been given to new employees or this is a way of introducing to bring you know more uh, skin in the game for the employees but this answers to a certain extent you know extent also if we look at another thing software expense the company spends almost 78 crores on softwares which means software is a very very important part of their overall expenses so what kind of softwares why we they need it uh, are these softwares you know in house or are these softwares which are uh, you know uh, purchased uh, which will tell because they say they are a technology company and it is reflected in the kind of software expense they're having. But it is important to understand the internal capabilities versus market purchase nature because if the softwares are being developed internally, this again tells about the technology capability. So it's little important to understand and get more details about you know this kind of expense. And last, we can see the company has converted everything into cash flows. If we look at the cash flow statement, it looks very decent. So very good balance sheet, good PNL, good cash flows, uh, and we have fair understanding of the detail and break up the businesses. Uh, what is important to monitor here is uh, you know employee expense to get more details around it, the nature of the software's expenses, and most most important, the amount of money which is being invested in subsidiaries, how that is going to pan out. I think that is something which will decide. Uh, you know, what kind of additional profit the company is going to generate. And also the breakup of the revenue streams where apart from the data services, what are the other three services and how they contribute and how they are expected to grow. Is it in line with the core revenue or is there something else to it? The next important section is of uh, related party transactions. And in fact, the other company which I was talking about that, you know, uh, this company was a key company in one of the theme which is being spoken about, but I decided not to invest I think the related party transaction, the subsidiaries played important, uh, you know, factor in that decision. So again, let me know if you want me to cover that company that will help us to understand, you know, where not to, the not to part to get at this. But again, coming to camps, uh, if you see the related party transactions, you know, there are uh, support services income, which is coming from the subsidiary companies. Their expenses, which looks okay in terms of expenses. If you see remuneration, looks okay. Share-based payments, until unless, you know, these ESOPs are genuine and they are not aggressive, uh, not non-performance based, that is okay, but we should get more details about it. Uh, there is some uh, uh, expenses on the software side and software is a big expense. And what they have done looks like one of the subsidiaries, remember you saw Sterling software and looks like this is the company through which they're dealing and providing software services to CAMS and then expensing it out. So why they're doing this arrangement? Why not directly through CAMS? I think that is a question which we need to ask. And, you know, what is the benefit of doing it through Sterling Software? Is it an in-house software company and they'll provide the software to other companies? I think it's important to understand what Sterling Software does and why, you know, this transaction is happening through them. But apart from this, more or less, the RPTs looked okay to me. So this is the only thing which we need to understand. 
So, you know, we started and uh, we went with our framework. We went one by one to the different sections. We identified the important insights. We also learned how to connect the dots because there could be informations on different pages, but there could be, you know, connected and how to establish that relationship and how to derive insights and then how to ask the right question deriving the insight. If you look at the subsidiary business performance versus subsidiary financial performance data, the subsidiary investment data, you know, there are a lot of interesting things which come up. Or when we looked at the employee salary, uh, you know, increase versus employee expense versus the ESOP data, we again got insights and things got connected. Uh, so this is how we should look at, in fact, also in the RPTs, if we look at the sterling services private, the related party transaction, the subsidiary structure, we got questions. So if we have understanding of all of this, if we have all the queries create, like, cleared, if we have fair understanding of where the investment of in each of the subsidiary is going, what is the expectation of the management? What is the future opportunity of these businesses? We will have a much better understanding of the company margin, company future, company's growth and all of the other things. So I hope this session was useful to do a hands-on exercise on how to study annual reports and how to you know, derive deeper insights. And do let me know if you want me to cover more such analysis. And also do let me know if you want me to cover that company where after analyzing annual reports, we sometimes decide not to go ahead with it and why we take those decisions. If you like our channel, if you like our analysis, uh, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe. If not subscribe, press the bell icon to get the updates. And most, most important is uh, do circulate it in your social media and WhatsApp so that we can reach to more people and that can help us to get more visibility, which is the big purpose. Thank you.